in the center of the stage tonight, businessman Donald Trump. I mean, I don't know if you're put this on television, but you don't even know what you're talking about. Ay, ay, ay. Hillary Clinton was the worst secretary of state in the history of our country. The worst. Our enemies are a disaster. Our friends, and they hate us more. So Mexico is sending lots of people. And by the way, they're coming from all over the world, including the Middle East. Why not? Come in. Come on in. We're stupid. We'll take care of you. We'll pay. Get sick. We'll take care of your hospitalization. What kind of a plan do you want? And by the way, unbelievable people are coming. There's a lot of people that are illegal. And oh, yeah, yeah. Ten years ago, everybody wanted the wall. The Democrats, the Republicans, they couldn't get it. You know one of the reasons they couldn't get it? Environmental impact statements. Did you know that? They were toads. They were this. It's the most incredible thing. They're going to make it's a massive plant, one of the biggest in the world. They're going to make all these cars, trucks, and parts. They're even making parts. It's so big, they'll make the parts, the trucks. And I actually gave them a good idea. Why don't we just let the illegals drive the cars and trucks right in through the border? They don't have to even... It's true. No, I gave them that. Save a lot of money. That'll be next. No, no, they'll be doing that next. So the Mexican government is not happy with me, to put it mildly. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's going to be a terrible president. She was the worst secretary of state in the history of our nation. Why would she be a good president? I think she'd be a terrible president. I beat the people from China. I win against China. You can win against China if you're smart. But our people don't have a clue. We give state dinners to the heads of China. I say, why are you doing state dinners for them? They're ripping us left and right. Just take them to McDonald's and go back to the negotiating table. Seriously. Right now we have Obama. He won't call. He doesn't even call to get our hostages back from Iran. Here we are in the middle of a deal, and he doesn't call about that. One sentence, I'd say, you gotta, before we start, get those people back. Used to be three, now it's four. Get those people. They'll be back the next hour. I'm a very militaristic person, but you have to know when to use the military. I know, I'll tell you what. I know the greatest negotiators in the world. Some are horrible people, horrible human beings. Who cares? Some Wall Street guys, they're brutal, they're miserable. You wouldn't want to go out to dinner. They're terrible people. I love them. I would have dinner with my kids almost always. And I'm always available to my children. I could be in the middle of the biggest, most important deal. Uh, for instance, if Ivanka called me right now and said, bye-bye, Frank, you're a wonderful guy. I got involved because I'm in the nursing home profession. Okay. Come on, try getting it out. Try getting it out. Try getting it out. Go ahead. Oh, wait a minute. Let me finish this. We don't have to know that you're in the nursing home business. What, are you trying to talk to some of us about joining your little home? Come on, sit down. Oh, yeah, yeah. We think it's good. We think your point is good. Yeah, give it to him. Good. You mean it's not politically correct and yet everybody uses it? I, so you know what? Give me a different term. Give me a different term. What else would you like to say? Well, you want me to say that? Okay, I said, no, I'll use the word anchor baby. Excuse me. I'll use the word anchor baby. Because you're supposed to be like Frank says. Very nice. Folks, I want to make America great again. We want to get down to brass tacks. We don't want to listen to his stuff. We're being politically correct. They sent him off the Rubio. Are you having fun? He's sweating like a pig. I never saw a guy sweat like this. The, the sweat is pouring down. I think Rubio is a low energy. But here's the problem with Rubio. When you sweat that much. Now think of it. So you have Putin. He's sitting over here. And he's waiting to kill the stupid Americans because he's been just destroying us so bad. So he figures out. And a guy walks in and he's soaking wet and sweating. Hello. Hello. Can I have some water? Uh, and Putin's sitting there. What the hell kind of stuff is this? This is not exactly a poker player, folks. And I said, somebody should run against John McCain, who has been... You know, in my opinion, not so hot. And I supported him. I supported him for president. I raised a million dollars for him. It's a lot of money. I supported him. He lost. He let us down. But, you know, he lost. So I never liked him as much after that, because I don't like losers. I'm at 38, I think, in South Carolina. He's at three. He's a senator. They have zero. They have one. They have two. Why do they keep going? There's something I don't understand. If I was one of them, I would crawl quietly out. I'd probably tweet. I decided to get out of the race. I wouldn't have a news conference. No, it's true. I tweet. I decided I'm going to get out of the race. And then I'd sneak out to some place with my wife and I'd just go away. So what would President Trump do? So I don't have money, I don't have lobbyists. In fact, I've had, in the last two weeks, because I've hired many of the lobbyists. That's true, I hire lobbyists. They're great, they're terrific people. They can do whatever the hell you want them to do, okay? So, let's say that Jeb Bush or Hillary or one of these politicians all talk, no action, all controlled by lobbyists and special interests and donors. People like me from previous months, okay? Total control. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. You know what that is, right? Jeb Bush said that on women's health issues, he won't fund them. Then he said, oh, I misspoke, I'm so sorry. Uh, there was no question because I heard when he said the statement, I was watching and he said the statement and I said, wow, I can't believe it. I will take care of women, I respect women, I will take care of women. They did the beheading and then they've done other, and I said, you know, they're making a big mistake, I said, because if they wouldn't have done that and if they wouldn't keep doing it, we wouldn't have cared, we could have been gone. But you can't, now when you see what they do, you can't. Had they not done those things, the level of violence, we're like living in medieval times. You know, when you hear middle, medieval times, you always think we're all civilized. It's a jungle. It's horrible out there. Uh, our governor here in Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, has described some of your comments about women as reprehensible. Do you have a response to that? No, he must have been talking about Jeb Bush. 
because frankly, Jeb Bush said he didn't want to fund women's health issues, and then he came back a few hours later and he said he misspoke. I think he must be talking about Jeb Bush. He's not talking about me. I want to get paid the same as a man, and I think you understand that. So, if you become president, will a woman make the same as a man, and do I get to choose what I do with my body? You're gonna make the same if you do as good a job. One of the things people love about you is you speak your mind and you don't use a politician's filter. However, that is not without its downsides. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Only Rosie O'Donnell. They call me the ratings machine. So I have, uh, you know, she, she gets out and she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you can see there was blood coming out of her eyes. I highly think you should read this book quickly. Quickly! But I was like, a young guy. I look so handsome. I said to myself, oh, I still look like that. And ISIS now is building a hotel in Iraq. They're competing with me. Do you believe it? Would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear arsenal? Take the Mr. Trump. I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. We говорили о Дональде Трампе, кандидате от Республиканской партии. Вы сказали, что это выдающийся человек, талантливый человек, чрезвычайно умный человек, и об этом говорили во всем мире. Я хотел бы узнать вот что. Что именно в этом человеке привело вас к такому его восприятию? И уверены ли вы в этом? Вот... company has yet to sit down and recognize that union and bargain a first contract. He says he's a world famous negotiator. If he really wants to make America great again, he should start by negotiating with these workers, making a deal with them. We are here to talk to Mr. Donald Trump to get a negotiation with our contract for a union because we won an election on December 5th last year. So it was clean, and we want him to respect that election. I live check by check, and it's a really hard job for us, you know, to send my kids to school. Muy difícil, muy cansado. Como he tenido la oportunidad de trabajar en hoteles con sindicatos. Es cuando tú tienes un sindicato en tu trabajo tienes respeto, tienes ese beneficio. Puede ser mejor con representación de unión. We're not second class employees. We want the same treatment as the strip because we work the same job, the same title, and we're getting paid less. And we got no respect inside the, the hotel. Now, I am a member of the U.S. Senate Committee on the Environment. And in that capacity, I have talked to scientists all over this country and all over the world. Now, I recognize that all of the scientists who have studied this issue for decades are not quite as smart as Donald Trump. I got that. Because I know that Donald Trump, after years of intensive study, has concluded that there is no drought in California. And, and Donald Trump, even after more years of study, has concluded that climate change is a hoax. See, now, I was not shocked to hear that uh, Trump thought climate change was a hoax. That's what most Republicans think. Pretty pathetic, but that is what they think. But what I was surprised about is he thought it was a hoax perpetrated on our country by the Chinese. See, and I thought he would, have, he would have believed it was a hoax created by the Mexicans or the Muslims. Why the Chinese, I don't know. This crowd has gathered here tonight spontaneously. It did happen so quickly. From the East German side, they have been training water cannon, as you can see. The West German police have moved in here, suggesting that they move back. 
saying that the situation is already complicated enough, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. There used to be a checkpoint before, and I sort of said, oh my god, I forgot my passport, you know. <laughs> I didn't need it anymore. Make thou an effort, that happily in this dust heap of the mortal world thou mayest catch a fragrance from the everlasting garden, and live forever in the shadow of the peoples of this city. And when thou hast attained this highest station and come to this mightiest plain, then shalt thou gaze on the beloved, and forget all else.